Hi, this is Dr. Leslie Allen, and I'm going to dive into why an elimination diet may not be enough to actually repair your gut when you're dealing with autoimmunity. So I'm going to give you tips, specific tips that you can implement during your elimination diet that are going to help to facilitate healing of the gut lining and really help you to reduce a lot of your symptoms that you may be experiencing. So if you don't know who I am, again, my name is Dr. Leslie Allen. I am a functional medicine physiotherapist. I've been helping people heal from chronic illnesses for over 14 years. And many of my clients early on were so sick and on so many medications that I knew I had to change the path that I was on from this traditional physical therapy um, setting that I practiced in. I then went on to learn how to integrate medical therapeutic yoga and Ayurveda, one of the oldest medical models in India that actually treats people based on their senses. So the interventions rather than medication are touch, the color that we see, the music that we hear, the smells that we that we smell from an aromatherapy standpoint, um, massage, different things like that, but mainly learning how to really begin to understand the mind and body connection. Because what I recognized when you're healing from a chronic illness, or you have any level of pain or in injury for that matter, there's always a mental component that needs to be addressed. And this is what most practitioners are missing. That's the key to, to truly healing the entire human, the whole being. You have to look at the whole picture first. So it really wasn't until I, my health began to suffer as I was, you know, as an entrepreneur and a very busy um, type A personality and living a very fast paced life that um, I was diagnosed with two different autoimmune conditions and the doctors weren't answering the questions that I was asking. So I knew that I had to figure it out for myself and this led me to functional medicine and getting a postgraduate certification in functional medicine so I could integrate that in to my practice as well. So I've been helping people across the US um, heal from autoimmunity and other chronic um, conditions for quite some time with the use of functional medicine, but also holistic healing, Ayurveda, yoga as medicine. So lots of different types of interventions to really make sure that the whole being, the mind, the body, and the spirit are being balanced in an efficient and an effective manner. So let's dive in. The elimination. Why it takes more than just eliminating inflammatory foods in order to really begin to notice significant healing. And this is because oftentimes most of us, if you're eating the standard American diet, um, we now know it only takes two weeks of eating fast food to wipe out the entire gut microbiome. All the good bacteria, it's just gone. Or perhaps you had frequent, frequent ear infections when you were younger and required antibiotic use, um, multiple rounds of antibiotics. We know through research that one round of antibiotic, and especially, you know, a broad spectrum antibiotic, it doesn't it doesn't just say, oh, I'm just going to kill off this one bacteria. It wipes them all out, including the, the good, healthy bacteria that live in the gut that are responsible for keeping the bad bacteria or the yeast in check. It's all a check and balance system. 
And a lot of these bad bacteria, they're, be they're so intelligent and so smart that they can actually become immune to the antibiotics. So it wipes out the good, the bad bacteria thrive and flourish and take over and adjust, you know, even the pH level of the gut so that it, it makes a gut environment that's conducive for it to survive, but not for the good bacteria. So instead of just eliminating, instead of just removing the inflammatory food, you also have to consider removing whatever else may be living in the gut. Do you have a low level um, yeast infection or a dysbiotic bacteria? And if so, you gotta get it out of there or you're gonna continue to, to have an impaired or increased inflammation within the body that's triggering your immune system. Your immune system recognizes there's something there and it's staying at this heightened state. Or perhaps you have leaky gut. And so with leaky gut, you know, the, we have little proteins that bind the mucosal cells together. They make them nice and tight. It's almost like our mucosal lining, if you'll think of it as a big fence, a fence that keeps the bad things out. It's kind of like the skin. It's very similar to the skin. So, um, now, all of a sudden, these zonulin links, the proteins that are binding these mucosal cells, have become weakened. So gluten alone can, can uh, weaken those zonulin links. And we create now these little gaps in between the mucosal cells where, where perhaps as we ingest food and that food goes to the gut and it begins to be broken down for digestion and absorption, now all of a sudden these tiny little food particles are seeping into the bloodstream where they don't belong and the immune system is recognizing it as a foreign particle and it tags it and this is how we start to develop food sensitivities. So now all of a sudden we're having you know, these sensitivities to all these random foods that we're eating uh, rather ju than just inflammatory foods. So the highly inflammatory foods that are a good place to start if you've never done an elimination diet, you're gonna wanna start for sure by eliminating gluten, all sugar, especially refined sugar. You have to read the labels closely. This can be tricky to do. Um, you want to eliminate processed food. By eliminating processed food, you're getting rid of a lot of the hidden things, the tricky little things that, that, um, that they'll do on a food label in order to hide some of the other bad things that they're putting in or the preservatives that increase the shelf life. You're gonna want to also eliminate dairy. Dairy's highly inflammatory. Um, uh, roughly 90% of Americans suffer from sensitivities from dairy, so we need to get the dairy out of the equation. And again, you're not eliminating this forever, and that's where I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of clients with autoimmunity, and they've removed certain foods for for years, but that's really not the purpose. So honestly, you're eliminating them for a 23 day window because this is the half-life of, of IgG, the immunoglobulin G that's responsible for those food sensitivities. So you remove it to see, um, because you wanna fully decrease that immunoglobulin, that Im immune system response, and then you reintroduce that food to see how that food, that specific food, is influencing your symptoms. That's the purpose of an elimination diet. Then, if the food then influences your symptoms and you see an increased spike and in, you know, your symptoms can range from brain fog to global joint pain, um, to muscle stiffness, to headaches, to anxiety or fatigue. So there, there are so many different symptoms that you can experience from food sensitivities. 
So as you eliminate inflammatory foods, anything, any dysbiotic bacteria or yeast, you also want to be repairing. So with repair, you know, we want to be supporting. There are certain things that really help to repair the gut lining, such as L-glutamine. That's a very good supplement in order. It's an amino acid that really helps with gut restoration. There's also, when you look at repair, short-chain fatty acids. If you don't have enough good bacteria in your gut, then as your body begins to break down food, it's, it's not gonna create what are called short-chain fatty acids. Butyrate is one of those. And that butyrate is responsible, again, for the repair for, of the gut lining. If you do have a little irritation there, it's gonna help to restore that. So with Restore, we're gonna wanna add back in good bacteria. Now this is where it gets a, a little tricky and where it's very beneficial to work one-on-one -on -one with a skilled functional medicine provider or a holistic provider is because there are times when adding in probiotic can actually add fuel to your fire. For instance, if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, this is where bacteria has migrated to the small intestines and it doesn't belong there. So now all of a sudden, rather than your food getting to the, the large intestines to be broken down, that digest, the digestion of it begins in the small intestines where you'll start to experience symptoms like bloating and um, gas and, and um, stomach pains. Many, many different symptoms can come from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So this isn't necessarily a situation where you would want to add probiotic. You want to kill off that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but you need to know that you have it. And that's where, you know, making sure that that your provider is performing the right test. So next, when you repair, I'm sorry, when you restore, you're also gonna wanna add in any type of essential nutrients that perhaps your body is not getting because of the dysbiosis in the gut. This could be B vitamins. A lot of times when you eat, when you have a dysbiosis, you don't get adequate absorption of nutrients. So, so it's important to then support the body while you're healing the gut. And this can be a variety of different nutrients. And again, knowing what you need to supplement with is the key. That is the key to really healing your autoimmunity. And so last up, you need to replace. And sometimes this can be anything from digestive enzymes, antioxidants, immune boosting nutrients or vitamins. So it really does, again, help to support the gut on all levels. Now, why is it so important to heal the gut with autoimmunity? It's because 70% of our gut comes, I'm sorry, of our immune system comes from our gut. 90% of our serotonin, serotonin is a neurotransmitter responsible for brain health, responsible for mood regulation, responsible for perception of pain. 90% comes from the gut. So this is something that I see frequently with my clients so often, you know, with, let's say, Hashimoto's. They have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and the, the bacteria is a Clostridia bacteria. Now, it doesn't have to be C. diff, that's the big one that, you know, your traditional medicine, or traditional doctors will test for, but there are lots of different strains of Clostridia and Clostridia 
feeds off of phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is a building block of tyrosine. It is tyrosine, that's like your thyroid hormones, T3, T4, that's tyrosine. Three tyrosine bound together, or four tyrosine bound together. So you have this bacteria that's now eating up your building blocks. And so it can also, it's gonna impact your, your dopamine levels. It's gonna impact your norepinephrine and epinephrine, those other neurotransmitters. They can, it's all linked together. But oftentimes what happens is with traditional doctors, they just are testing for what are your thyroid levels? And then they're gonna supply in the thyroid. Rather than really looking to see the whole picture and diving in to see why are your thyroid levels low? What is causing it? And going after the root cause instead. All right, I hope that you found this extremely helpful. If you would like to explore what it looks like to work one-on-one -on -one in our Overcome Autoimmunity Regain Your Health program, then book your call. Book a breakthrough call. This is something where I dive into your specific medical history. I can give you pointers and help to get you started on what you need to focus on in order to really guide your healing process. And if you, we are a right match for one another, if I feel like you would be a perfect candidate for our program, then we can explore what that would look like as well.